right, this is Lo with Behind the Gloves, and I am here with George Lockhart. I'm really excited for today's interview because two of my favorite topics are nutrition and boxing, of course. And so <laughs> we've got the nutritionist of champions in the house. Uh, George, can you give us like a rundown of some of the most notable clientele you've had? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, so we've, I've worked with, uh, obviously Conor McGregor, Tyson Fury, uh, we've done Triple G, uh, right now, like the company works with Josh Taylor at the moment, um, uh, Daniel Cormier, Khabib Nagamadoff, Max Holloway, um, just about any champion that you think of in the UFC, we've worked, I've worked with John Jones, um, yeah, I mean, we got a we got a plethora of guys. It's uh, it's been awesome. I got to work with Caleb Plant. Um, try to think with boxing. Yeah, the Caleb Plant. Um, uh, he just uh, uh, Billy Joe. So we just got into boxing like a year ago. So I'm I'm uh, it was a year year and a half ago now. I think time's flying. No shit, it's like two years now. So wow, yeah, that's a long been, list for just two years. <laughs> with the boxing yeah it's been it's been awesome though it's uh it's really cool i love working with the boxers it's definitely different than the mma community yeah and so i mean you've probably been in like a ton of different training camps and stuff so like what roles responsibilities do you play in these training camps like what does a typical day in training camp look like for you uh it's cool like with uh tyson you know i'm up when he wakes up and i'm there when he goes to sleep you know what i mean i probably spend more time with him just than, than anybody um you know it's it's a lot more than like a lot of people are like well you just cook it's funny because boxers fighters it's more than just the food because like if, if you have amazing food and then they come in there and you're just like hey how's it going like here, here's your food they want that energy. You know what I mean? And the cool thing is about Tyson, he's got energy. It's real easy. Like, it's just like a compounding thing. You know, I'm always excited about what I'm doing and he gets in from training and we just shoot the shit. Like, you know, just now we just got done. And, um, it's, it's awesome. You know, it's, uh, it's not really, I don't really work for him anymore. He's like one of my best friends. So, um, when it comes to, to answer your question, it comes out, it is about the, the nutrition. It's about giving them what they need when they need it. But diet to me is it's a lot more than just the food that you eat. You know, it's headspace, the kind of environment that you're around, you know, so kind of in a nutshell. You know, what? that makes sense, too, because I mean, like some people, when they're in a stressful situation, they have like physical reactions to that. So their body turns into healing mode. And so it's not like they can just they're not optimizing that nutrition anymore. It's like their body's going into survival mode because their mind is in survival mode. So, I mean, that, that makes a lot of sense, what you just said. Um, and you are currently working with Tyson Fury. How did you get started uh, working with him? Um, I had a, a friend. So we're working with, I was actually working with Body Jack. A guy, and um, he, his manager was talking to Tyson's manager. And Tyson, they wanted a, a food guy. He just wanted someone to prep his meals and stuff like that. And um, they're like, bro, you're, you know, you're, you're the champ, you know? So they're like, let's, let's get someone that can actually cook. Um, and it was funny, you know, we, we talked a little bit and I can't believe I'm going to say this, but like something happened with the stove. The very first meal that I cooked for Tyson, it was chicken. I put, I put it on broil. Everything was good. Boom. Come out. And uh, they had talked him into working with me. And my very first meal, he cut the chicken and it was raw. And he looks at me, he's like, <laughs> he's like, George, this is raw. And I'm like, oh, my God, first meal that I've ever, I was like, you got to be kidding me. Uh, I don't know what happened. Like, I could like, oh, it was, oh, it was crazy. I was like, man, I, could, I was in such a rush. I just flew in. Um, but never, obviously never happened. Like, the next couple of days, Tyson was like, bro, he's like, I'm never doing a camp without you. Like, uh, you know, it's like taking the stress off of fighters. You know what I mean? Like keeping the play like you know how fighters are and camps are you have a group of just neanderthals living in one house <laughs> and it's just a mess everywhere and and tyson he's like one of those guys that he's actually really tidy like he's he's super clean so my job like i just want to make sure that everything's tidy everything's clean so when he comes downstairs you know he doesn't have that like you know you know cluttered space it clutters your mind so oh yeah you know, absolutely one of those things 
That's awesome. That's awesome. So how has it been? Like, I, I didn't realize that you were there with him when he went through that massive weight loss. Um, when I was doing so, a little bit of my research, I didn't realize that. So tell me about that. I started working with him during the uh, the wild, the second Wilder fight. So he oh, was okay. already, and uh, it was crazy because, yeah, I'll tell you, like, when I say I just got into boxing, it was crazy because, like, Triple G had called us, and uh, I talked to my partner. I'm like, bro, have you ever heard of Triple G? And he's like, are you freaking kidding me, George? Like, I, did you just ask me if you know that? I was like, I've never, you know what I mean? Like, now, <laughs> obviously, I'm in boxing. I mean, it's embarrassing. But uh, Tyson, like, I had just learned about Tyson, and I'd seen him on the Joe Rogan podcast. And uh, my partner was like, bro, you know, like, if there's anybody that you're going to relate to is this guy, you know, like, military mindset and everything. So I came out, and, like, we hit it off, you know, perfectly. It was, it was, uh, it was neat, but it was a second uh, Wilder fight that we, that we started working together. That's awesome. Uh, does he like, what's his favorite meal that you cook him? Man, everybody asks me that. It's funny because like, it's it's always different every camp. But it's weird because like sometimes, like I'll make, I remember I made pokey for him the first time. He never had pokey. And um, he's like, this is my favorite. This is absolute favorite. And then the next camp I make it and he's like, I don't like this very much. And I'm like, damn it. Like, I'm like, I can never, it's like his taste buds change or something. But, <laughs> uh, you know, I, try like i asked him what his favorite meal is like you know he likes fish and chips but there's no way in god's green earth i could cook or fix fish and chips like they do out here in england like i'm addicted to fish and chips out here i go like every other day to atkinson's it's freaking it's amazing but um with his meal like he likes spicy like i'm a, i'm actually half mexican so like i always find a way to freaking throw a jalapeno in every meal you know what i mean so he, he <laughs> loves that so he likes spicy a lot so yeah, yeah. Smart. Um, so I do see like I've noticed on Instagram that you all were posting like he was tagging you and in, in stories, like you're coming over there, and I was like, wait a minute, do we got a fight coming up? And then I saw that he was hinting to Saudi Arabia. Listen, I'm a detective. I also oh. know W I, WWE is having something in Saudi Arabia next month. Is there any correlation to that? I don't know. I'm just the food dude. I stay out of everything. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I asked Sugar Hill the other day I was asking him I was like okay when can we expect him back in the ring and then shortly after that the March 26th date came out and so I texted Sugar Hill and I was like hello what about this day and he said don't get don't even get excited about that there's no opponent no venue no contract yeah. nothing so man I would say if you don't know, like and that's no BS like all kidding aside I uh, after after uh, Wilder 2, I did like three or four camps with Tyson before Wilder 3. I went out uh, December, like, it, I'm sorry. I came out, it was October to December because he was supposed to fight December 5th. Nothing came through. Then I came back out in February. Then I came back out again. Then we finally ended up going out with uh, with Wilder. And then the whole COVID thing happened. And then we came out again. It's like, geez. So honestly, like when he calls me up, I'm down because it's always a good time with Tyson, but honestly, like I'm not, always, I don't expect anything until it's like official. It's the words out and everything else. Yeah. Yeah. How was, speaking of Fury Wilder three, I mean, that was the most insane heavyweight fight that I've seen in such a long time. And like I told Sugar Hill the other day, like our house is as loud as that arena. I mean, we were so just like jumping on our furniture. Like we were, we felt like we were there. It was awesome. Yeah. How was that though for you? Cause I mean, you had been in camp with him all up until that point and you're like close with him. So how was that? How was that fight for you? Just experiencing that? Oh man, uh, don't, <laughs> I, I couldn't watch. Like <clears throat> after like third round came, I'm like, here we go. Easy day. Like we're just doing a review. <laughs> And then fourth round came and I'm sitting there like, what just happened? Like, what's going on? And uh, I just turned, I just turned around. Like I, I literally like the aisles that er like everybody's going, like going to, like I'm right there to the, uh, with the ring. I just turned around and I'm like, everybody's looking at me. Like, why aren't you watching the fight? And I'm just sitting there like, got to breathe, got to breathe. Like my heart was going a million miles an hour. Um, it sucks, man. I hate it. Like I hate, hate, hate watching people fight. Like, um, it was like, like when I was fighting, it was so much easier because you feel like you have some kind of control, you know, but 
Um, he's tough. I mean, he's, he's, it's insane how tough he is. So he came back, but uh, it was a good, I'll say it was a good night. And the next couple of days were really nice as well. Oh, yeah. They, I mean, y'all were living it up after, which was rightfully deserved after having three or four training camps waiting for it. Oh, man. So yes. Is he itching to get back in the ring? Yes. Oh, my God. Yes. He's always, you know, it's funny because, like, you know, he, I get to see the insides. Like, everybody's like, oh, so and so's ducking, so and so's this. I can't tell you. I mean, literally, if somebody's like, you want to want to fight tomorrow, Tyson would sign 100%. He just wants to fight all the time. And uh, has nothing else to do with the fact he just loves to fight. Like, the guy never stops training. Um, I think a lot of people like the accolades of fighting, whereas Tyson, he might, might be the first person I've worked with that just loves fighting. You know, take the money, take the belts, whatever. He'll still be doing it. Yeah, and, you know, I've I've heard him say multiple times, you know, I don't care about the belts, I don't care about the money, I'm, just, I'm a fighting man. And I believe that when he says it, because you can you can yeah. just see it. He he'll he's ready to throw down anytime, any place, anywhere. Um, and people are saying, "Oh, he's ducking Dillian White." Tyson Fury is not even. He just gets the call if if anything happens business wise. I don't think people realize that. He kind of yeah. he's not he's not a part of them business meetings. That's that's all his business people. That's not him. I'm sure he'd be ready to go down in a Walmart parking lot if it was up to him. Yeah. Hundred percent. I can't tell you how many times I've heard him like just throwing everything but the kitchen sink at, on the phone. Like, I'll fight him. What, what what do I need to do to fight him? Like, and they're like, he's he's seriously like, okay, I'll fight him. And they're like, well, you can't fight him because this right here, like th this this clause or something. He's like, okay, well then I'll fight them. And they're like, well, you can't fight them because and he's sitting there just frustrated. And um, I've never seen anything like it in my life. I, I'm like, geez, man, I've never seen somebody want to fight so badly, especially a champion, you know? Most of the time, like, I hate to say it's like in the UFC, you get a lot of guys that they just, they want to stay champion, so they don't they don't put anything on the, as much on the line, you know? Whereas him, he just he just legitimately doesn't give a shit. So he's willing to fight <laughs> anywhere, like you say, to get on. So. Yeah, well, I'm definitely excited to see, you know, him get back in the ring and everything. Um, I was wanting to ask you, though, because I was looking at your website. Do you have any, like, courses or programs or anything for people if they were wanting to learn how to maybe do what you do, like work with these camps or even just learn it for themselves on how to do um, nutrition in the component of, like, combat sports? Yeah, yeah. We, so we, we have a it's a weight cut certification. And it's funny because you, you look at everybody in the UFC right now, everybody working with champions like Tristan Kennedy works with uh, Connor. He was certified underneath us. Uh, John Poppy's working with uh, Josh Taylor was certified underneath us. Uh, Jordy's he works with um, Adesanya and Alex Falconowski. He was certified. like everybody basically has been certified underneath us. And uh, if they just go to our website, they can go and uh get the online certification. We usually do an in-person certification. There's two, two levels where you do practical application, but obviously because of COVID and everything, we haven't been able to do that, but the online course is awesome. And then once you get it, um, we spent close to a million dollars on the program that it comes with. So it's like business in a box. Our goal was to basically help uh, fighters, you know, make weight, you know, obviously not everybody makes what Tyson makes. So they, we, you know, you can't hire somebody to come out, but a coach can do the certification and be able to help their fighters out, you know, like walk them through the weight cut process and everything else. So that was kind of our goal. Um, cool thing is we're working with the WBC specifically now, um, went out to the symposium and, um, you know, it's cool that we're literally going to be certifying just about every coach in the WBC so they can do that with their fighters. I love it because you have taken like nutrition and boxing and you have married the two and you've made like a really just like fantastic career out of it. So, I mean, that's why I love to follow you on Instagram because I'm like, to see, I, I take little nutrition courses all the time, but I've never thought of it in the context of boxing. I've just like thought, let me take this nutrition course, see what I can pull from it to apply to boxing, but you kind of already built a course, you know, for that. So I think that's really cool. Well, yeah, speaking of Instagram, so. where can people follow you? Uh, you know, uh, Lock Loaded in the May uh, on my Instagram. I think Lock Loaded on Twitter. Um, and if they go lockhardandleaf.com, they can, you know, they actually go to the website, see uh, what we do, who we work with and stuff like that. 
Well, I'm going to make sure to put all of that in the description and everything. But George, I appreciate you taking time out of your day to speak with me. Um, and like I said, we're excited to see Fury back in the ring soon. Um, anything else you want to say to the rest of the fans? No, I mean, I, I appreciate it. This is, it's awesome. I always love it. I'm just a food dude. Anytime I get interviewed, I'm like, this is really cool. Um, but uh, I just want to, you know, thank uh, our sponsors, Grunt Style. We're, we partnered up with Grunt Style. It's a, it's a uh, veteran-owned company. We're a veteran-owned company as well. We love what they do. We love what they stand for. We're actually pushing something, uh, mental health, over the next three months. Um, I'll be putting, like, Lockhartisms and stuff, like sayings that I do, working with fighters and things that have helped me transition out of military civilian life. Um, and then Casa Drino, which is another Marine Corps owned company. That's where we get all of our olive oil straight from Greece, all of our vinegars and stuff like that. So just shout out to those guys. Thank you guys for helping us do what we do and help the fighters that we help. Hey, my fans, it's Michelle Joy Phelps. Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking this icon right here and hit the bell button below so that you can receive an alert every time we upload a new video.